Howdy, my name's Eric and I'm an environmental microbiologist. Scientists and technicians in my profession look at air quality samples all the time, so we have a good feel for what's normal and what's not. So you can appreciate our interest in a recent Facebook post about a moldy agar plate that went viral. It turns out this microbiology student in California conducted an experiment in her class by holding an agar plate under a Dyson Airblade hand dryer for about three minutes. She incubated the plate and shared a picture of the growth to her friends on Facebook. That post got shared. A lot. It reached over 500,000 and even hit the national news. The New York Times even did a story on it. Now I'm all for the concept of what she did. Science is all about conducting experiments and sharing your results. But look a little closer, and you'll see this. And this. Unfortunately, she jumped to a rash and uninformed conclusion. On top of that, in the same post, she even promotes cleaning products that she sells. So what happens when you perturb an aerobiologist with misinformation? Well, you might just get a video with a short introduction and an experiment that should put everything into perspective. I hope you enjoy. Now this fungi is called penicillium, common in laboratories and throughout our environment. One square centimeter can contain tens of thousands of reproductive structures called Canidia And from these structures, spores called Canidia are produced by the thousands. Ultimately, a colony no larger than a coin may produce upwards of one million spores. Clearly, the fungi are well adapted at saturating our world with their progeny. As you can see, fungi are great at producing lots of spores, and these spores are small. They're designed to be caught up in the air currents. They're everywhere, in the air that we breathe, on the surfaces we touch, even the clothing that we wear. So your next question might be, how much is out there? Howdy. Now out here in the southwest, things tend to get a little dry. <laughs> All right. A lot dry. Now, air quality investigators, we measure the amount of spores in the air by spores per cubic meter. Now, out here during the dry season, you'd be lucky to break a hundred. That may sound like a lot, but that's nothing compared to if you venture forth into town. Out here in the street, fungi be whack, yo. Over 1,000 spores per cubic meter. That's all from the propagation of dead vegetation, commensurate with irrigation. That all leads to exaggeration of sporulation. Even 1,000 spores per cubic meter is nothing compared to what you might see during the monsoon season in the southwest, or in a temperate rainforest, or in the Gulf states, where spore counts approach 10,000 spores per cubic meter, and that's the norm. The purpose of this video is just to show you how common fungal spores are in our environment, both in indoor and outdoor areas. So I will be replicating the original Facebook experiment with the Dyson Air Blade and with a common hand dryer. I will also be using my professional equipment to take indoor and outdoor samples. Air quality investigators have a variety of tools at their disposal but two of the main ways that we capture and identify fungi is with the spore trap, which is a direct particulate capture method for viewing spores directly on a microscope slide, and the Anderson capture system, which is used for capturing microorganisms and growing them on culturable plates. Here's an example of a plate that has gone through the Anderson capture system you can see the impaction holes, which increases the chance that the fungi will grow into colonies. Now these old school hand dryers, they move a lot of air, about 200 
cubic feet per minute, that comes out to about 5,000 liters of air within just one minute. So you can see how it would concentrate a lot of spores in a short amount of time. Behold, the Dyson Airblade. The Dyson Airblade moves about 60 cubic feet of air per minute. That translates to about 1,500 liters of air per minute. So not as much as a classic hand dryer, but you can see it still would concentrate the amount of particulates impacting the plate. One of the things the Airblade has going for it is that the air is pre-filtered through a HEPA filter. However, because it's coming out at such a high velocity, that fast moving air creates a low pressure zone, drawing in all the surrounding air to it, which kind of defeats the purpose. On top of that, the high velocity air will aerosolize any liquids on your hands, and if you haven't washed your hands perfectly, any particles suspended within those droplets get spread throughout the room for everyone to touch and breathe. But I'm not here to criticize the air blade, let's move on to our results. For practical reasons, I am dividing this video into two sections. The results and discussion section will be made available as soon as they're ready. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it interesting and entertaining. Please discuss the merits and the flaws of this project in the comments below. And please share this video with anyone whom you think would appreciate it. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon.